Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Tuesday. It's May 7th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and uh, it's all downhill today, and a uh, pretty big downtrend. We were we were rallying here towards the close, and you can see we rallied in the close. Took some of it back, but we're still off considerably for the considerably for the day. Uh, I mean, we we traded well below 2,900 today. And it wasn't long ago we were almost at 3,000, so uh, we were halfway to 3,000. So pretty big sell-off, and that's not unexpected. I mean, we were probably overdue for a correction, so um, sometimes those are good things. But uh, these are the kind of days where you just have to take advantage of these moves. It got a little flat right in here, which we'll talk about. But there's a larger two-tiered channel working lower here. And prices pretty much stayed in this lower half most of that. We tried to go higher right here, you can see, but eventually um, prices sold off again. And this is where you got to be careful. These look like reversals, uh, but these are just a correction and an overdone market. And there's really resistance up here. Yeah, why well, that pasted way over here? I'm not sure, but anyway, you got resistance up here, and it just you know, it just comes across, so we never could get back above that, really. We might have broke above there slightly, as you can see. We'll look at that a little closer when we get to it, but um, we kind of went flat there for a little bit. Notice that that's after we made a measured move down. We had we had about a measured move down, and that's where we kind of went flat, so that's your little bit of a correction there, and we bounced a little bit one more time, and then we were off to the races down again, and that's kind of what you'll see, um, but, you know, if you measure this first leg... First leg down. We started down again from there, and you can see that puts us down right in this uh, these lows right across here. So, um, pretty strong day down, but we'll back out. A lot of trades here, and and there's probably others you could argue for. I tried to mark most of them, at least mark them green if you know if there was a possibility. And some of them may have looked a little better on your chart than mine, and you might see some that you liked that I don't have marked. It doesn't mean that you were wrong by, not, by, you know, because you liked it or whatever. Um, because some of what we do is, you know, there's human judgment in it. And uh, some of it's based on our experience and our feel for the market. And uh, so there's always trades. You know, I get a lot of questions, I, you know, before I send out the daily chart lesson, you know, what about this trade? What about that trade? Generally, uh, I, you know, Wait till the chart lesson comes out, and if I don't answer your question there, then feel free to send me an email. But a lot of times I'm going to talk about them anyway, and, um, you know, it's just one less email I have to answer. So I'd ask you, I'd, if, please, if you can, just wait till the chart lesson, and if I don't answer your question or you don't see your trade that you're asking about, then feel free to send me a message. And, and if you still can't figure it out, always feel free to send me. I don't want you to think you can't send me an email, but wherever I can, you know, eliminate any unnecessary ones I'd like to just to free up my time so uh, anyway let's back out and talk about the trades early on there was some strong support across here as you can see so uh, we were still trading within the overnight highs and lows we're actually we're still in the overnight and so this looks a little like even though you got a little trend line working down you got an overshoot here so that means you're probably gonna get a break pretty quick and you ended up getting your break right here move to a new low and then you get a little bit of a trap you're a long way away from the EMA you could look at this like a failed break lower so you may take this trade because as we talked about yesterday you might catch a major low for the day so sometimes these are worth the risk uh, generally, you're better to wait off on a higher, to wait on a higher low or reversal type pattern, and we never really get that. We kind of falter right here at the midline. You don't want to be going long into that EMA and into that midline and all. And um, you probably should have had that midline, even though it wasn't confirmed on this side. I mean, that's pretty easy off those first two swings. You drop it down here, you find the middle, and you can see prices working both sides of that already. That's pretty simple to find um so you're probably better off to wait and you're probably better off to look for a short here and as you see we move up we get a first entry and then we get a second entry we get a relatively small bearish bar on a second entry short right at the ema right at the uh midline and you got plenty of room to get out before here and definitely before the lows so i think that's worth taking 
it looks like it's going to be a mistake at first, but then all of a sudden the bottom falls out of it, and you just keep running down. If you catch that one trade and hang on to it without getting shaken out, you could ride that all the way down. Um, there's a lower high right here. Not back to the EMA. Um, you've already had a break here and at least one leg down. You may get another leg down, but I'd wait on the second entry here, and you don't get it. Notice how prices reverse. And notice that new low. And then you get a first entry short, and then you get a second entry short, and you get a nice bullish bar that bounces right off what looks like a little spike in channel. And we may be getting a reversal here. This could only be a correction, but it may be a reversal. Um, so you may you may go short there, I mean long there, and then you get a, a second entry long on another failure there. And again, it's right off that trend line. I definitely like that. When you got plenty of room back to here and it could just keep going and the fact that we're not getting to these lows uh, this channel could be wrong so you know you, if you get a trap like that you probably want to take it to the long side um, even though we've been trading down right here you still don't have all the evidence you got that of this big strong once you start really trending strongly downhill then you want to kind of forget about longs unless you get a real a real nice confirmed trend in the other direction or whatever and you almost have that here I mean you basically do have that here this looks like a nice little reversal pattern so notice that new low and you get a first entry and then a second entry you could almost argue for that one to be blue because it's a failed second entry short uh, it's right off to the EMA right off the trend line it's a nice little reversal pattern but you, you want to tries to go lower again and fails you definitely better get in there so doesn't go very far before it reverses again, but it's still a nice, easy trade. So we run up here. You finally get a break here, and again, you're back below that e mid, uh, midline and all, and you've had a break here, and there's not much room to the top. I, I just kind of sit tight and see what happens. There is a lower. Notice how we run down. There's a lower high here. First, let me back up. You get a break here, move to a new high, and then all, you're headed down again. There's actually a little downtrend right here. I didn't draw the trend line, but it's here. And notice you get a break and a new low, and it tries to correct. And you, you, so you get a lower higher, so you may consider going short right there. It would have worked, um, but, the, you know, those bars are really kind of going sideways. Um, that's your first break of this, and there's not much room to the low. It could just tick down a tick or two in reverse. So I think you're better off to wait. And then you get the failed second entry long. And you come back and test the EMA. And so now you got a failed second entry long. Uh, a nice little bearish bar right off the EMA, right off the midline. That's where you probably want to enter. And again, the bottom falls out of it. It just kind of takes off. And then you run down, pull back first entry, and you get a little second entry short there. And look at all those matching highs and you break higher. That's probably going to trap some people. Another, you get a little lower high here, but you're way too far away from the EMA. You've already had a break and a new low. Just sit tight. You bounce here. You get a higher low, but it's still below the EMA. I think you better wait, and you just never really get another chance, and the bottom falls out again. Again, a lower high here. Um, but you've already got to close outside this trend line here and you've got a little double bottom right there so you're kind of going short right into a little double bottom again i would wait and notice how you come up and make this double top then you try to go higher once twice and you're really going sideways here and you get that little failed break lower and a little breakout pullback short on a failed second entry long um i like that one and you just want to make sure you got enough room to get out before here for sure. And it doesn't end up not matter, but you won't still want to be aware of that. So uh, it looks like we may get another reversal here. We do kind of get a reversal pattern, but you got to go long right back into these highs. Notice that you get a failed second entry short that turns. It actually breaks lower and turns. It goes out the other side, but um, I don't think you, you want to go long right there. Uh, we are coming off the lows, but... Um, I want to see a more confirmed trend line than that, especially going long right into all that resistance right there. And you notice it, it would have worked, but it's not long before it turns down. And then you get your first break. And if you tried to go short there, you would have got burned. That's why it's all, you're usually better off 
to wait on a, um, a little better setup. Uh, coming off this low, you want to probably least see it. Try to get back up here to this midline. Uh, and we could go all the way back up to here. So you got to be real careful here. And that's your first really big swing there. So you kind of want to wait on that one. But you notice if you draw that, if you draw it off there, it never gets confirmed and it never is there. So you just kind of ignore it. Notice how prices fall right through it. And then they're headed down again. So, uh, but, but now you've at least come off the midline. And so you get your break, move to a new high, and you got a lower high here. I marked this one uh, red uh, because it does close below the EMA. I think you're better off to wait and see if you get a reversal. But this thing is starting to become a strong downtrend. And with it coming off the high here and making it a much lower high and closing below the EMA, relatively bearish bar there, I'd probably take that one. This one's real close to being green. But when it comes back again and gives you that failed second entry long and that bearish bar, go short right there. Don't ask any more questions. Uh, it comes back to the trend line once again. Um, you're really close to the low side, so maybe um, this one's real close. You could almost argue for that one to be red. This one's the same thing. Uh, you're starting to get away from the EMA. You're probably headed lower, though. It is off a key entry point. Um, you're not going to have enough room to probably get a second entry hardly. You, you got one here, but you're probably not going to get any more. Um, there's not a whole lot of room. So, you know, you may take either one of those. And, of course, we finally get a break. You get a lower high here, but it's right into this low. You don't have any room to work with. You could look at this one as a failed second entry long. This is one of the ones you could argue, you know, Maybe you saw it a little different. Maybe your chart looks slightly different. You could at least argue for it to be green. But on a downtrend like this, you're going to get so many, you know, you're getting so many good setups that, you know, just wait. And then if you just wait right there, then comes a nice second entry short, big bearish bar. Um, and then look at it go. And it takes off then. Uh, we bounce off the bottom again. It's really tempting to try to get long down here, but this has been a strong downtrend. I'd stay away from anything to the upside until we get a really confirmed uh, trend going higher. And instead, notice we move up, we get a break, a lower high. I'm a, I'm a little nervous of going short right there. I think you need to wait on something a little better because we're not back to this side. We had a little bit of an overshoot here too, and we're not back to the midline. Uh, notice you make a lower high right here, but the signal bar is not very good. Then you get that failed second entry long. Uh, if it turns down from here, just go short, which it does. And it's a nice easy scalp. It doesn't go much lower than it bounced. And we're kind of getting the sideways here. Again, you work back up. You get a little close outside here, a new high. Turns down off the midline. But I'd wait on a lower high, which doesn't come till here. And... This is another one you could argue to enter right there, but I think you're better off to wait and see if you get uh, a lower high from there and you actually do. And that's where I would enter. That's a failed second entry long, a second entry short. And, but again, you could argue for that one. I'll at least make it green just because it, it could look slightly different on your chart and and, you know, there's days where I'd take that trade most times, but on a big downtrend like this, um, you know, wait on the better entries. And then, of course, you bounce here off these lows again. I wouldn't be thinking anything long at this point. You get a first entry, and this actually breaks higher and turns down. You get a second entry short. I, that's another one I didn't mark. Um, it's awful close to all that support across there. We bounced every single time. Um it is a second entry short, and if and you might have room in there, you probably do. So it's one you could at least argue for it to be green as well. So, and like I said earlier, there's going to be a lot of trades in there that could go either way, and you may see them slightly different. Um, same thing here. Here's another second entry short on a little breakout pullback short when we're headed lower. Just came off the highs here, so there's a good chance we're going lower. But look what happens. We don't make it back down there, and we bounce. So. That's why you got to be really careful, especially with it going sideways like that. So I just, I'd stay out of that whole thing right there. It's just really too much sideways. Uh, a lot of congestion right there. And even though you might have snuck a short out of there, why risk that when you've got so many good setups and you'll probably have a good many more before it's over. 
but we bounce here we get back in we pull back first entry long we pull back and we test that same support area my lines are not drawn across there but it's there I can assure you and you test that breakout area and you get a second entry long on that bounce right there uh, there's a long way you still got plenty of room to here and it's a long way back up to here and if we're headed back up to here we've got even much longer so it's worth maybe risking along right there uh, I'm only gonna make it green because when you start trying to pick bottoms you, you know you're really asking for it you get another chance right here on a failure and this is a failed second entry short too it's a second entry long notice that low and you go lower once and you go higher and you go lower twice and it, it tests that support area and holds and turns it back up so we're probably going higher here how high is the question though runs it on up you finally get a break and guess what it moves up tries to make a new high and just makes a uh, triple top there um, not a very good signal bar I think I would wait and it's a shame that you know that you we didn't get a, another chance to enter before here because again the bottom falls out of it now if you had a very good signal bar right here or even even maybe had a little tick lower on a second entry on a double test you might take that uh, but it's not a very good signal bar on my chart, so I'll go ahead and just make it green to point it out or whatever. Again, I think you're better off to wait and look at it go, and then it pulls back here. And I, I drew that trend line off these lows and just drug it up and it turns it down right off of it. I like going short there. That's your first lower high, and you're, you may get a measured move just like that. So I would definitely measure that leg. Put my measured move over here. Of course, you're probably not going to go through this trend line, but you might. But notice it tries to get on down there. It doesn't quite. Eventually, it does go to exactly that tick right there. Notice that. That's a perfect measured move before it corrects again. So, you know, use those measured moves to kind of help you stay on the right, right location. Uh, comes back again right here. Gives you a failed second entry long little breakout pull back short and then now you're outside and you're making new lows I just sit tight until finally you get a correction first entry and you try to go higher again a second entry and it fails and look at that big bearish bar uh, you're still not quite down here yet so uh, you still don't quite have a measured move so you probably take that only because it's a trap because we're we're way down here and we have come back to the EMA and we you know we tested that EMA three times you might even consider going short there um, I think that one's a little more risky than this one though and so I'm not gonna mark that one but it's a possibility and of course we bounce and you, you know you're looking like you're getting reversal patterns in here but this downtrend is so strong just wait um, notice you get a break a new high again I'd wait and then finally you get a double test of that notice she made that high you test it once you test it twice this is basically um, you could even call that a possible failed second entry long it, it's not really a failure but you try to go higher twice and you're not going any higher you're turning down right off the midline nice bearish bar I'd probably take that one and then you realize we're going sideways again notice how it comes back and it can't quite I don't know if you can see that or not but it can't quite get back to the upper uh, resistance area because it turns down right off the midline. And so I like that one. You could look at that as a failed second entry long. You got enough room to get out if it's in a range. And boom, you get another nice move down. Um, too much sideways right in here. Same thing here. Um, I don't like going short right there. You could look at that as a failed breakout, but look at that signal bar. Not It's very neutral. Then you're starting to stack up. Now you don't want to go short right into that. And if it looks what, look what would have happened to you if you did. It bounces and you would have got stopped out. So just be patient. Um, that really takes you into the 2 o'clock hour. Um, I mean, that's not long into 2 o'clock. And notice what happens. First entry, second entry, big bearish bar. You know, if you're still hanging around, you might take that trade. 
so really the last trade was about 130 here you just didn't really get much else uh, and again there's you know even this one is a possibility but it's an inside bar of a big bullish bar and you got four stacked up there uh, you know it worked and but don't let that fool you because you know that's what will happen to people they'll see a trade set up like this and it's not a very good setup, but they'll say, oh, but it looks so good. You know, we're probably going lower and they don't take it. And then it goes exactly where they think they do. So the next time they try it again, they said, last time I didn't take that trade, I paid for it. And they take the trade. And this time it's like right in here and it bounces on. So if you did the right thing, just because the trade moved on, don't let that get to you. You did the right thing. You traded properly. And, um. And so learn to be patient and learn not to chase trades and learn not to beat yourself up for missing trades. Now, if you just don't take a trade because you can't pull the trigger, that's one thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you don't be gun shy because some people have that problem. They'll see a perfectly good trade and they, they talk themselves out of it and they can't pull the trigger. So that's a whole nother story. Uh, don't be that person either. But uh, at the same, you know, if you get the setup, by all means, take it. But don't beat yourself up for not taking a trade that didn't set up perfectly. And it still, and just because it went where you thought it was going to go, uh, like I said, don't beat yourself up over that. So anyway, nice downtrend today, all downhill. I mean, if you couldn't find a few trades in today, then, you know, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I don't want to say, you know. Uh, you know, just, I don't know what else to say. If you couldn't find a trade today, then, and, you know, one reason might be that you were trying to buy all the way down, which is what usually happens to people. They try to buy all the way down. Once you realize you're in a strong trend, don't buy anymore. If it's a downtrend and if it's an uptrend, don't sell anymore. Just look, just wait for setups to come back to key places and then, and then look for something to happen. And, uh, you know, it's, but some people struggle with that, you know, they get used to these sideways days like we've been having and anything that hits the bottom, you can buy and it bounces. And then suddenly they start trying to buy every all the way down and it doesn't bounce. And they're like, what the heck? Well, it's a different type day and the price action is going to be much different today. So keep that in mind, but I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, you know, I hope you had a good trading day. Hopefully you didn't struggle with this because we don't get many days like this. And when you do, you want to take advantage of them. Try to get a runner or two. This is where you want to try to hold runners. Um, yeah. Anyway, I hope you had a good day. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with price action uh, actually real quickly before i go i want to mention one other thing i've had a few emails about the new mini uh or micro es people are asking me about it honestly i know amp does offer that our group broker is offering that now and several most of your brokers are offering it because it's available on the exchange now uh, i don't know much about it i haven't really looked that into it that much um so I really can't help you with it. Uh, one thing I, I can probably assure you, even if at some point it is tradable, the volume is going to be really thin right now because it's a new market and there's just not going to be that many traders, not going to be that much volume. And you really probably will not be able to scalp that market and do what we do. Um, I mean, you could use price action and try to find swing trades or whatever, but I can almost assure you that you will not be able to scalp that market. Um, there just won't be a sufficient volume. It won't be there. And um, so it's going to be difficult to scalp it. Um, again, you can use price action to find swing trades, but you need to be a little bit more choosy on your trades and they need to be more of a trend when you're trading them or failed breakouts, that kind of thing. And um, not so much sideways stuff. You know, you probably won't be able to trade this kind of stuff because you won't be able to easily scalp out of it. And uh, other than that, I can't tell you much about it at all at this point. At some point, I may load a chart and look at it. And, you know, if any of you have any feedback, feel free to post some comments or whatever, because I am getting questions about it. And I'm sure there's uh, 
people that would like to hear any feedback on it. So if you want to post some comments in the video on it, if you've been using it or going to use it or have looked at a chart or anything, whatever you want to add, feel free to do that just to help everybody else out. And uh, if any of you want to send me an email with any details of anything you know about it, that would be great as well. And then I can pass that on. But I have not even looked at a chart at this point. Um, I don't see any reason that I probably will anytime soon. But uh, my guess is it will mirror the ES, which basically mirrors the S&P. And if you look at any of the ind indices, they all, you know, they all mirror one another for the most part. They kind of do the same thing. So um, anyway, I just want to throw that out there. So I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again tomorrow. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.